Time to start up the nasty for another long trip. Load it up and head it out to central Ohio. Well, we're about an hour and 45 minutes into the trip so far. Coolant's good, oil pressure's good. Trans temp hasn't gone over 160 degrees. Boost has hung around uh, between five and 10 most of the time. A couple of times it got up to 20 going up some pretty steep grades. And the exhaust temps have pretty much hung around 700 the whole time. So everything's looking good. Jeep hasn't moved. We're cruising. Doing pretty good time in this thing. Doing about 66 miles an hour at about 1900 RPM pretty much the whole time. So feeling pretty good about it. 45 more minutes to go and we should be there. So I've actually got a super steep grade coming up that I'm gonna be driving up. And I thought this would be a good opportunity for a video. So I gotta take a right here when I got a nice clear opening, but it's pretty sharp directly uphill for the most part. You can see that hill coming down and it goes up likewise. So we're gonna wait till, I think that car's turning. Just gonna wait just to make sure Yeah, they're turning. So we're gonna go on up the hill here. Check out the gauges. Trans got up to 180, EGT's got up to about 900. Got almost a 30 pounds of boost for a little bit there. And uh, we just got to 45 miles per hour. So, <laughs> um, I mean, pretty pretty steep grade and I was starting at zero, you know, coming around a corner going up. So, and I and I wasn't pinning it. I didn't have it all the way to the floor. I just kind of just kind of gave it the right amount of fuel to keep gaining traction and moving forward, of course, but, um, I didn't have it pinned because that would just completely dump smoke the whole time and not be the most productive really, but could have gotten it faster, but it would have been a lot smokier for all the traffic coming on. So uh, did good though. Well, we got the Jeep unloaded here. There's grandpa's tractor. And there's the nasty red. I think we've got our work cut out for us with that. Getting it going. There wasn't many options to get back in here. And apparently there's a street fair going on right now. So I wasn't able to pull the truck and trailer up to my grandmother's house. So this is where we are. Luckily her place is only, uh, I don't know, five to 10 minutes maybe from here. So I figured I'd unload the Jeep here, get this all locked down, put the straps in the truck and lock it up. I'm probably just gonna go over to her place tonight, see what she's up to. And then tomorrow morning, I'll probably come out here and get to working on getting that hopefully started and running. I brought a bunch of uh, parts cleaner, carb cleaner, WD-40, PB box. I mean, I bought all kinds of stuff to bring and try to get that thing running like a top. So we're gonna see what we can do. I brought my bag of tools, my impacts, my wrenches, my sockets, all that stuff. So hopefully we can get some progress on the tractor and get that thing to life again. When my grandfather was in the hospital, he was just constantly talking about how he wants to get his tractor running. He wants to get his tractor running and it was running fine and then it started giving him some issues. So hopefully we can make that happen, but I will catch you guys back out here in the morning. Well, we're in the truck. Everything's running good. Started right up put some fuel in it because like most memories from over the years every time I got in my grandfather's truck it was on <laughs> it was on empty taking it down the first road to that we drove down together once I got it back to his house and I said hey hop in we're gonna you know we're gonna get a video of you taking it for a drive one of the first roads we drove in we drove on together once we got back to his house and we made a you know filmed a video riding together and it's truck when I got it for him way back. Excited to get it back to looking like it did when we picked it up for him years back and it'll be fun. 
So here's the tractor. This is gonna be our main focus for today. I'll go over the truck in another video because there's a lot to go over with that. It needs a lot of work. Um, but here's the tractor. It's an Alice Chalmers WD-45. He's had this tractor for as long as I can remember. I think he's had this thing since, <sighs> I really don't know for sure. I wanna say at least the 90s um, since he's had it. We're gonna try to get this thing um running is the goal we're gonna fix a couple things a this hose clamp here looks like it's falling off so we're gonna fix that we're gonna check the sediment bowl to make sure there's no um rust in there or dirt debris whatever there could be some stuff in this line here um but we're gonna try to go through some things i got new battery cable ends for this because these are all pretty they're pretty wore out pretty nasty so we're gonna get those changed out <sighs> and we're just gonna try to get this thing fixed up as much as we can to get it running today uh it does have reverse cables so the black is actually the positive the red is actually the negative on this thing so that's why the batteries the way that it is and the negatives over here with the red and whatever so um hopefully we can get this thing started i've never actually ran this tractor myself i've never driven this tractor so i'm going to be learning for the first time today assuming we do get it started i did bring some fresh gas and stuff and i did bring a whole bunch of tools impacts sockets wrenches i mean everything i could think of that I thought I might need to get this thing running today and driving the way that it should. So we're gonna see if we can at least get this thing started up because we've got a we got a heck of a mowing job ahead of us, assuming we can get it running. So we've done it before. Let's see if we can do it again. Let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start by changing out the cable ends here and cleaning the posts and getting these bolted on, and then at least just starting with that for the first attempt to get it running. Because if that works right away, then at least we can get this thing running and driving. And then if it starts to act up and sputter out like it used to, um, then at least then we know we might need to clean the carb or clean out the fuel lines and stuff like that. But it might just start right up and run fine. So who knows, let's get to it. Now I stuck the muffler back on there. It's not real tight. And I put new battery cable ends on so they can get a nice tight fit. Keys turned on. Let's see if it'll start just with that. So it is turning over though, so that's good. So I'm gonna fix that down there, make sure it's got plenty of fresh fuel in it, and then see if we can get this thing fired up. Well, I did just take the entire carburetor apart, piece by piece, took carb cleaner, clean everything out, made sure all the passages were blown free of any kind of debris or old fuel gunk or whatever. So we put, took it all apart, put it all back together. So now we're gonna see if that changes anything. I don't know how much fuel is supposed to be sitting in those, but there was a lot of fuel and some like orange cruddy stuff that came out of there. So Hopefully that fixed it. So I'm gonna turn the fuel valve back on and see if it made any difference. So there's the fuel. Turn that back on. The fuel should be running back down to the line there. The key's already in the on position. It, it got definitely got a lot closer that time. So I'm gonna pull the fuel a little bit. And there she is. I don't know why that's one of the most satisfying things I've ever started, but it is.
I know you couldn't see that round that I made around the property, but it cut out on me one time going up a hill. But other than that, it seemed to run fine. So I was coming up the field, bush hogging up the hill. As you can see, it stopped a little bit there. I kept going to try to keep testing it. But the PTO stopped spinning, the bush hog. And apparently the bolt or pin or whatever is supposed to be in here um, came out. So I'm going to have to try to find something kind of like that. That'll go in there and uh, keep it so it'll actually engage. So we're dealing with that right now. It, it apparently just fell out. It cut off. I don't know what happened, but it's gone. Well, we got the old Dodge out here. Getting ready to load up and head out. I'm gonna have to fire up the nasty red. I don't really know how this video turned out, to be honest with you. I had plans of like doing a lot more mowing. Not sure why this is on the road. I'm gonna get off the road. But yeah, so I mean, I had, I had some more plans for getting content and video with that tractor and stuff, but I'm out here filming by myself, so it's a little bit hard. So it was kind of complicated to try to get video when I was doing the carburetor work and all that other stuff because, well, I'm out here filming by myself on my cell phone. I didn't want to kill my phone, so it was kind of hard, but I got some video. I got some. I'm going to actually go up on top of the hill here, but I'm going to start Nasty Red first so it can warm up for our trip back. figure she probably needs a few minutes to warm up but here you can see what i did get done all this up here but apparently the carburetor is having a problem with the float in it it was kind of flooded and had some rusty material in it so that's why it was starting up with the carburetor the way that it was but apparently the float in the carburetor is acting up is what we've come to the conclusion on there because when this thing is going uphill it if it's going uphill or it's under a big load like you know it's you're lugging it with the bush hog chopping down some stuff it kind of sputters and it goes pop 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 like it doesn't really want to run very well so we're guessing it's the float inside the carburetor there that's the guess um, based on some research that i did that's kind of kind of what we were coming to the conclusion with on that and then the pto shaft uh kept coming off but we were able to go get a flange bolt that was a super heavy grade and then cranking that on there with the impact and it's not having any issues now but uh we're gonna tear into this later i've got a lot of plans for this thing but you guys are just gonna have to stay tuned i don't have time to do it right now i gotta get home but we are gonna be working on that tractor quite a bit i'm gonna learn Alice Chalmers the best that I can. I've kind of tinkered on that thing a few times with my grandpa over the years, but for the most part, it was him showing me how to fix stuff on it, and I never really got my hands on it too much. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. There's really not a lot to them. They're pretty simple machines, which is why my grandpa always had Alice Chalmers for the most part, and they work just fine as long as you keep them running. For now, I'm gonna get that truck loaded up that's out on the road, so I gotta pull the ramps. And then I'm gonna actually pull Nasty Red out onto the road where it's flat and level and then load the truck up. That way it's a little bit safer than doing it on this hill right here because the trailer's almost bottomed out. And right now it's not with no load on it, but if I put the truck on it up on here, you can see the license plate's actually crinkled from already touching the ground. So um, it wouldn't really do us much good. So we're gonna get this thing pulled out onto the road and then get the truck loaded up.
Well, we're all loaded up and ready to head out. So I hope you enjoyed the video that I was able to get for you guys this weekend. Um, you should be seeing this on Monday. And uh, if you did, please leave a thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this. Um, we got the truck loaded up, bringing it back. We're going to get started on this pretty darn soon. It's got a lot of small things that it needs, but we'll go over that in another video because there's it's a lot of small things. Um, but uh, we did get it picked up. We're getting ready to get on the highway here. And yeah, I'm excited about this. And I hope you guys are too. And one more thing. If you have not done so yet, enter to win our 2003 59 Cummins. It's that black one, 84,000 miles on it. The thing is stout. It's super clean. And uh, you guys will not be disappointed in it. Right now, every $1 gets you one entry for all the items on the store except for one item, and that is the monthly mystery boxes. If you get a monthly mystery box, every one dollar gets you 20 entries, always, every single month when it reorders your mystery box, you automatically get 20X entries into the giveaways, and you never miss a giveaway, you always get 20X, it's a win-win, and you get some of the coolest gear that nobody else has yet seen on the store that's not been released yet. So there's a lot of perks to it. Not everybody's a fan of the mystery boxes, which is totally fine. It's not for you, it's not for you, but if you do sign up for the monthly subscription boxes, and you do go with those, you do get 28 centuries forever, basically. And by the way, that giveaway ends in three weeks. So there's three weeks left for that giveaway and then it's gone. So sign up for those or just place an order, buying anything on the store and you're automatically entered to win. Best of luck to you guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.